Welcome to our Shiloh Community Church service for February the 20th, 2021. And I am Jan McPhail. I am serving as a pastor of this very much loved uh, body of believers. I sure do miss you folks. I really do. And I hope that we will be able to meet face to face soon. Uh, I realize other churches have begun meeting again, but our board wants to ensure that you are safe. So please be patient as we prayerfully consider and watch these next few weeks ahead and as they unfold. I have a little story for you this morning about a little boy named Philip. And he was spending the weekend at his grandmother's house and I mean, I have five little granddaughters and one on the way, so I'm really excited to spend time with my little ones. But Philip was spending some time with his grandmother uh, after a particularly difficult week at preschool. So his grandmother decided to take him to the park So uh, on Saturday morning because it had been snowing all night long and everything was just beautiful with the white and the, the freshly fallen snow. So his grandmother commented, Philip, doesn't it look like an artist painted this scenery? And she said, did you know God painted it just for you? Yes, Philip replied. And he said, uh, God did it and he did it left handed. This confused his grandmother. So she asked him, what makes you say that God did this with his left hand? Well, said Philip, we learned in Sunday school last week that Jesus sits on God's right hand. Get it? Painted with his left hand. Anyway, let's just take a moment to pray and ask God to be present with us as we look into his word today. Heavenly Father, thank you for another day, for every breath we are given, and for all of the things that we take for granted. Thank you for our food, for our shelter, for those we love and for those who love us. Thank you for our church family who we haven't been able to see face to face in a long time. We pray that the opportunity for us to meet corporately will happen soon. And we do ask that you would bring this virus to a halt soon, Lord. Be with us as we look into your word today. And we ask that you would challenge our hearts and our thinking to be focused more on you. Uh, And Lord, I ask as well that we would be willing to trust you and to surrender our everything to you. Be our everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I dive into the message, I want you to listen to this worship video entitled No Longer Slaves. Loving God, whose touch can heal the broken places of life, heal us today. God of peace, whose spirit of peace can quiet our spirits of confusion and despair, Reassure us today. Forgiving God, whose call to repentance promises grace upon grace, place your mercy in our souls today. You heal the sick and liberate the imprisoned, who bring justice in the midst of oppression and strength in the midst of weakness. Pour out your spirit of power upon us today. Open our hearts to new faithfulness, redirect our waywardness, and hold us gently in your goodness. We confess our need to you, and we turn to you with hearts filled with hope, remembering the promises you have made to us. May your name be glorified in us and through us. We ask it through Christ Jesus, your only begotten Son, he who is our Lord and our Savior, our brother and our friend. Amen.
This video touched you as it touched me. I do love that song. We are no longer slaves to fear. We are children of God. If you have um, your Bibles, I encourage you to get them, your Bible app, whatever, and just be on the ready uh, because we're going to go back to uh, Journey Through James 1, written by the half-brother and the apostle of Jesus Christ. I have really enjoyed breaking down this letter, which is full of great wisdom and advice on how to serve Christ effectively. So if you have your Bibles, will you take it or take your Bible app and read along with me in James chapter one. That's near the very end of the Bible, the letter of James chapter one. Are you ready? James 1, 12 to 18. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. He never tempts anyone else. 
Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his pride, prized possession. May the Lord add his blessing upon his word. So as we look into this today, uh, we're going to be talking about, excuse me, itchy nose, we're going to be talking about temptation. Now, I remember back in the 70s, yes, that was, uh, seems like yesterday, but it was a very long time ago. And there was this comedian uh, by the name of Flip Wilson, and he did a character called Geraldine Jones. And I know some of you are snickering because you probably remember Geraldine Jones. J-O-N-E-S. Yes, Geraldine. Anyway, she used to say, the devil made me do it. She'd talk about all these sinful things she did, this church lady. But she would always say, oh, the devil made me do it. And I do, I mean, YouTube it, you can find it. He was pretty funny. But the thing is, is that we're always making excuses for our bad or poor behavior. And we sometimes go, oh God, you know, why did I do that? Why? Well, you chose to do that. Temptation is not a sin. Giving in to temptation is. God calls us to lead a holy life. He calls us to live a good life. He calls us to um, be imitators of Jesus and to follow what he says and to do what he did. And this says, uh, there's a verse in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and it says the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. In other words, everybody is tempted. You may look at somebody else and you think, oh, they live a perfect life and they're such a goody two shoes and they're so good at what they do. And, you know, I could never be like them. No, they make choices every day. They are tempted the same way you are. They are tempted the same way I am, but they make the right choices. The verse goes on to say, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. If you want to know the reference again, that's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. This is a very uh, misquoted and misunderstood scripture because a lot of people will say, well, God won't give you any more than you can handle. Sometimes in life, there are things that are more than we can handle alone. That's the key. You are not intended to go through these difficulties alone. And when you follow Christ, when you are faithful to him, he will give you the strength. Remember, I'm not talking about your strength. I'm talking about his strength. One of my favorite verses in scripture talks about the incredible strength. It says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. It's again, leaning in on God. It's trying not to control things yourself. It's not putting yourself in a position of um, such temptation that you are going to cave to sin. I had a talk with my granddaughter this week about someone who was mean to her. And I said to her, you know, you can't control what that person does. You can only control how you respond to it. And that is the key for us as believers. There are 
many kind of temptations that come our way. Sometimes someone hurts us and we're tempted to react. I saw a sign once that said, don't react, act. Choose to respond differently than what's expected. Choose to do something kind instead of hateful. There's so many things in life that we cannot control. We can't control illness. We can't control death. We can't control when others deliberately hurt us. But what we can control is our response. This is what temptation is. Temptation isn't just, you know, lying and, and cheating and being hateful. Temptation is also maybe you're hurt and you're tempted to retaliate. Maybe there's something you need to do. This is my, uh, the, the bane of my existence is procrastination. You know, I, we were joking about it tonight at the dinner table. And I said, I joined the procrastinators club, but I keep putting it off. You know, I, it's a temptation for me to procrastinate. And I have to give myself a talking to. I'm not always successful in it, but sometimes I have to give myself a talking to about procrastinating. But in James is talking in this particular context, though, about enduring testing and temptation. Interesting that he puts those two words together. He said, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. And the thing is, when we are successful in doing this, when we truly follow Jesus, when we truly turn our hearts over to him and give him everything, there is something wonderful in that, that we will receive a crown. We will receive a crown from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For your endurance. Then he goes on to say, we already talked about temptation, but he goes on and he says, don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Whatever good, whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down from us, from our God, our Father. We have so much to be grateful for in our lives. And sometimes our focus is more on the things that are wrong than the things that are right. And I challenge you every day, look for the things that are good. When you look into the skies, you see the clouds, when you see the beauty of the heavens, the stars, the sun, that beautiful blue sky. When you see the birds roosting, in the trees. This morning, my husband saw two beautiful cardinals in our front lawn. How can your heart not swell and say, thank you, God? He says he never changes or casts a shifting shadow. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes unlike this world that's shifting all the time god is not shifty he is solid and it says he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word and we out of all creation became his prized possession is there anything in your life that's your prized possession maybe your child or your grandchild Maybe it's a pet. Just think of how much you love them and multiply it by a kabillion. That's how much God loves you. And he knows that when you're in right relationship with him, as you were created to be, then you will find fullness 
and goodness and greatness in serving him. Right now, I'm going to play for you a video from the skit guys called Lemonade. Sorry, called Lemonade. Uh, please watch, and I'll be right back. Ah, fresh lemons. I think it's one of God's better creations, you know? I mean, there's nothing like a fresh lemon. Mm. Lemons on their own aren't really good. But don't give up on the potential these little babies have, because the truth is, there's nothing like fresh squeezed lemonade. I mean, it's a hot summer day, you come inside, somebody's poured you some fresh squeezed lemonade. It's great, but it's a pain to make. I mean, let's be real. You gotta cut the lemons, you gotta squeeze them, you gotta pour the water, you gotta put the sugar in, you gotta stir it around, you gotta... You know what, when I describe it, it doesn't really sound like that much work, but it really is once you start doing it. That's why most people don't make fresh squeezed lemonade. I know I don't. I mean, if I want lemonade, I get it out of a can. Three scoops, some cold water, and you're good to go. But it's not as good as the real stuff, you know? The real stuff, the way God intended lemonade to taste. In fact, you know what? Let's make some lemonade right here. I don't care if it's a lot of work. You got to uh, cut your lemons, squeeze them into here. Oh, man. Ooh, ooh. I got a paper cut. Uh, citrus, not so good on the open wound. Uh. <laughs> you may want to wear goggles. I don't know. Oh, it's really burning. Okay, that's... Dude, that's it? Uh. Dude, I can't squeeze all of these... Hand squeezing is really overrated. Uh, you might want to get yourself a, a, a juicer, and then you, you hand cut it, and then just right there on the juicer, and yeah, that's, that's a lot easier. You know, we've all heard the saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And it's easier to smile about that saying, or to tell somebody else that they should do that than to actually do it yourself, because it takes work. But that's actually a good philosophy in life. In fact, it's biblical. I mean, you look through, the whole Bible is filled with people who, who turn their uh, defeats into victories. They, they turn their trials into triumphs. Instead of being victims, they became victors. Consider James chapter 1. That, that whole chapter is about turning lemons into lemonade. In a sense, James says that the trials and the uh, temptations in life are lemons. And if we are overcome by our trials or we give in to our temptations, then we'll end up having a, a sour life that leaves a bitter taste in our mouth. But James goes on to say that we don't have to do that. We can be victorious. We can be just like the, the great people of the Bible. I mean, we can turn our lemons into lemonade. That's what the Bible says. All right. Okay, the, you know what? The Bible doesn't really even have the word lemons in it. I, I looked it up. But still, it works. I, I mean, think about this. Moses, he turned his staff into a snake. Jesus turned water into wine. God himself took dirt, took dirt, and made humans. That's pretty amazing. I think it's easy enough to say that God is interested in taking things that, that it seem useless and making something great out of them. And we have that same potential. The question is this. You can either let your lemons in life, your trials and your triumphs overcome you, or you can make lemonade. As for me, I'm interested in some lemonade. Looks just like what Grandma made. Cheers. I think I forgot the sugar.
You know, there's a smile and a good lesson all combined into one. Look, I can't tell you how to live, but scripture certainly has given us an outline of how to live an authentic Christian life. And I'm going to tell you that you will have temptations in life. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be perfect because it won't be. But the only thing we can control is our response to the things that come into our lives, how we hang on and how we hold on to Jesus, how we trust him at his word and we live it according to his directive. Then we will find peace. Then we will um, be given uh, the strength and the endurance that we need. It's not trying to do it on your own. It's leaning in on him. So as we close today, I want to leave you from these word, with these words from 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. God bless you richly. Until next time.